Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a first for the U.S. House investigating the Capitol riot as a former lawmaker becomes the first to be held in criminal contempt by Congress. Outside with live cam, waking up with some clouds around, very humid, very warm this morning. We are just right around 70 degrees as we start out your mid-December day. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, December 7th, uh, 15th, 15th is what I'm Getting saying. ahead of yourself on the calendar. I am, 15th. <laughs> I even wrote it down right here. Good so, to have you here this morning. Thank you. Happy to be here. <coughs> 10 days till Christmas. Am I doing the math right? That yep. sounds about right. Okay. It does. It doesn't feel like Christmas, though. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night because I didn't set the AC down like I usually do, and I was like, Oh my gosh, it's really hot. Yeah, that noise? <laughs> yeah that's, that's the sound. And by the way, you want to have that furnace checked out if it's making that noise. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, temperatures <laughs> are almost 30 degrees above normal right now. And so you can feel it. it. Yeah, yeah you're not sure what to, which to have on, the AC or the furnace, or just leave it off. AC through the rest of the week, furnace for the weekend. Okay. We're still looking at a big, strong cold front to move through here. We do have a little bit of fog around this morning, nowhere near what we had yesterday. As you can see, that picture is uh, pretty good. We do have some down here along. The, uh, the coastal plain visibilities are all good. Yeah, 70 here in town, 73 since in mid upper 60s. These are normal low temperatures right about, say, the middle of summer. Yeah, that's what it is. And then we're going to be up almost close to record high temperatures the next couple of days. More on that coming up. The humidity remains extremely high out there. And one reason why we don't have a whole lot of fog this morning is the fact that we've got a fairly decent breeze out there. Wind out of the uh, south southeast about 10, 15 miles per hour, and it's going to stay kind of on the breezy side throughout the day today. And as far as allergens, well, Mountain Cedar showed back up yesterday. It and mold are both on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning. Pretty much again, what you see is what you get. Little bit of fog here or there, uh, maybe some mist, but again, fog is not as big of an issue as what it was yesterday. And then pretty much just cloudy skies. Can't completely rule out a sprinkle or two if there is anything out there. A couple of showers here and there the next couple of days, but then still looking at the same weather to come in here on Saturday. Strong cold front. Wet all day, windy, much cooler for the weekend. How long will the rain last? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. A man who worked for the local chapter of Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts of America is now facing a serious crime. Christopher Mendoza is charged with possession of child porn and possession with intent to promote child porn. He was arrested on December 9th. The Boy Scouts of America Alamo Area Council confirms he worked in their outdoor programming department. They terminated him when they found out about the arrest. Mendoza had worked with the chapter since 2014. The Scout executive and CEO Michael De Los Santos released this statement in part saying the actions alleged to have been committed by Christopher Mendoza are reprehensible and opposed to everything for which the Boy Scouts of America stands. We are not aware that any of Mr. Mendoza's actions involved any scouting youth, end quote. Now to the news from, the Wash from Washington overnight, a major step in the investigation into the January 6th riots. Former President Trump's top White House aide is now being held in contempt. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, a second person from former President Trump's inner circle now faces possible criminal prosecution after refusing to testify for a congressional committee investigating January's attack on the Capitol. The resolution is adopted. Overnight, the House voted to hold Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena. Meadows has turned over 9,000 documents, including emails and text messages from Republican lawmakers and even from Donald Trump Jr. But after turning over those documents to the committee, Meadows is now refusing to answer questions about them. If found guilty of criminal contempt, Meadows could face up to a year in prison. But the decision on whether to prosecute him is up to the Justice Department. The vote to hold Meadows in contempt fell mostly along party lines. The Democrat says, no, nope, not good enough, Mr. Meadows. You've got to come in and answer any and every question we ask you, or we're going to try to put you in prison. It's disgusting. Mark Meadows has demonstrated contempt for Congress and for the public. He should be prosecuted like anyone else who ignores the law, because no one is above the law. 
Former White House advisor Steve Bannon has also refused to testify. He's scheduled to stand trial next summer. As for the committee's investigation into the attack, an organizer of the rally that preceded the storming of the Capitol is cooperating. Dustin Stockton spent seven hours with the committee Tuesday. He says he regrets how the rally unfolded, and he blames former President Trump for the violence. The buck's got to stop at President Trump. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. President Joe Biden will visit Kentucky today to survey the damage from the deadly tornadoes that have ravaged that state. The president expected to get a storm briefing at Fort Campbell, then survey storm damage in Mayfield and Dawson Springs. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir says 122 people in the state are still unaccounted for. At least 74 have lost their lives, with 88 dead across five states and one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks in U.S. history. In Washington, Congress averted a catastrophic debt default early this morning after Democratic majorities in both chambers voted to send a $2.5 trillion increase in the nation's borrowing authority to President Joe Biden. The vote followed a similar move in the Senate yesterday. The action came just hours shy of a deadline set by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who warned last month that she was running out of maneuvering room to avoid the nation's first ever default. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said the new debt limit will be extended into 2023. That means the issue will not have to be addressed again until after next year's midterm elections. The U.S. debt toll from the coronavirus pandemic is now topped 800,000. A closely watched forecasting model from University of Washington projects an o a total of over 880,000 reported deaths in the U.S. by March. President Biden is once again calling on unvaccinated Americans to get the shots for themselves and their children and is urging others to get booster shots. U.S. crossed the latest threshold with cases and hospitalizations on the rise again and a spike driven by the Delta and Omicron variants. Right now it's 436, about 69 degrees. Up next, San Antonio Spurs spread a little holiday cheer before tonight's game against the Charlotte Hornets. Outside with live cam, is rain still in our weekend forecast? Is it going to be kind of hang out inside with the family kind of weekend both days? We'll talk to Mike, get clarification on his extended forecast coming up. It's Wednesday. You're watching GMSA. Welcome back. Time for a look at morning sports. San Antonio Spurs got another day out before finishing up their five game homestand tonight against Charlotte, but not Keldon Johnson. After giving $1,000 each to five families for a Christmas shopping spree at Academy on Monday, the Spurs forward was added again yesterday, this time suiting up to Santa and surprising 15 families on the west side, spreading Christmas cheer with gifts and, of course, Spurs tickets. A blessing to be here, you know, a blessing to be able to to help some families out and, you know, see their reactions. Uh, we just had a kid and like, uh, when when he seen the gifts and seen everything that came with it, he's, his jaw kind of dropped like he was shot. And, you know, that kind of really like things like, little things like that really make my day. And, you know, glad to see other people happy. Back to work tonight against the Charlotte Hornets tip off 730 at the AT&T Center. UTSA Roadrunners head coach Jeff Trailer has been out on the recruiting trail before resuming practices this week for the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. That's because today is early National Signing Day in college football. And Trailer says he has 12 commits with another eight in play. He says he'd like to have 16 to 20 signed up by February, thankfully. Traveling around the uh, Conference U.S. with the trophy uh, certainly won't hurt his recruiting efforts. It's a heavy trophy. I'm, I mean, it, it wore me out. Uh, so that was a little surprising how heavy that rascal is. Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know Wednesday. Uh, if we get those guys, I guess it was good. And if we don't, I guess it didn't matter. Roadrunners are two and a half point favorites over the Aztecs. Now the Roadrunners have a chance to end their remarkable season with their first bowl victory. Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl set for Tuesday, December 21st, 6.30 p.m. at Toyota Stadium up in Frisco. The Battle and Beavers of Fall City have a chance to win their first state championship since 2010 when they face Stratford tomorrow at AT&T Stadium. Fall City's historic 24-20 comeback against Mart to end a three-year domination over the Beavers is what got them to the state game. Now they face a team that has the exact same record as they do, 14-1 for all the marbles. Yeah, it's pretty special just to be able to bring back the attention of Fall City and show what we're capable of. Their quarterback's quick. He's, he's pretty good. He's shifty, running back. Their front line are pretty big, but nothing we can't handle. 
Fall City kicks off against Stratford 11 o'clock tomorrow morning at AT&T Stadium up home of the Dallas Cowboys. Good luck, Fall City. Good luck. It's exciting. 442, about 69 degrees. OJ Simpson is now a free man after being convicted of armed robbery and kidnapping back in 2008. Still ahead, a first look at what comes next. OJ Simpson is officially a free man this morning after an early discharge from parole. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, OJ Simpson off parole and now a free man. Convicted of armed robbery and kidnapping in 2008, OJ served nine years in prison. His parole then granted unanimously in 2017 in what was called the parole hearing of the century. My vote is to grant your parole. Grant parole. parole. The NFL Hall of Famer led a group of five men to hold sports memorabilia dealers at gunpoint in a Las Vegas hotel. Even after serving time, Simpson remaining adamant the items belonged to him. This after Simpson was acquitted in the trial of the century, accused of brutally killing his ex-wife Nicole Brown and her friend Ron Goldman. We the jury in the above entitled action find the defendant Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder. So what comes next for Simpson and does he still owe money to the Goldman family. Legal analyst Dan Abrams weighs in live coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Now to some safety recalls. First up, a nationwide recall of various cooked ham and pepperoni products has now expanded tenfold. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with what to look for. A big ham and pepperoni recall is even bigger, expanding to 2.3 million pounds of meat. The concern is possible listeria. The recall includes 27 cooked products from spiral sliced ham to pepperoni sticks. They were sold under several brand names, including Alexander and Horning, Five Star, Food Club, and Welsher Wood. We have more on our website. Kitchen range recall. GE Appliances is recalling 132,000 freestanding ranges sold last summer. They can tip over when a heavy object is placed on an open oven door and the anti-tip over bracket is not secure. The risk is serious burns if there's hot liquid on the stove. Several brands are included, including GE, Hire, and Hotpoint. Don't return these to the store. Instead, contact GE Appliances for instructions. We have more information on our website. A half million portable bed rails are recalled after two elderly people died. Drive to Vilbus Healthcare is recalling four models of bed assist handles and rails because people can get trapped and suffocate. They were sold at medical supply stores and online at Amazon and Walmart. And on the naughty list, Santa's mailbox. Target is recalling 174,000 of these after reports of finger cuts on the sharp metal slot. Take it back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, it's a little early, but uh, it's warranted. Stephen Cavazos is here with a traffic update. Yeah, good morning, Mark. Sarah, we are here a little bit earlier this morning than usual because we do have a few incidents happening on the roadways right now. Uh, let's take a look here at I-10 East at Loop 410. Now we do have a pretty heavy first responder presence as well. Uh, also looking at some road flares placed along the Axis Road with some activity happening up there with what looks like it's on the on ramp. Still very dark outside, but uh, this is obviously something that drivers are going to want to be aware of while they're driving out in this direction. Right now, no areas of the road or highway have been closed off just just yet, but let's take a look at that map and see how things are shaping up and pinpoint what exactly we're seeing at. As of right now, Texas has at incidents a label at I-10 eastbound at Foster Road. That camera at Trans got about a mile from where that is. So again, it's very difficult to make out exactly which uh, where that incident is happening, but with you know that it's in that vicinity. So something for drivers again to be on the lookout for. We're going to watch that very closely throughout the morning and give you those updates as needed. Uh, let's take a jump over here because we had a crash or an incident. I should say that was detected also off I-35 at Zazamora saw lots of flashing lights out there earlier, but I was just checking the trans guide cameras. Looks like that may have just cleared out, so that could be some good news. Uh, but jumping up over here, we do have another stall, a stall, I should say, off US 90 eastbound at Military Drive. So I would say this Wednesday morning, we do have a few bumps in the road, so make sure that you are driving carefully out there. Again, we're going to work to bring you all those updates. We have a crew actually heading out to this scene, and again, they'll provide us more information as it does become available. Guys. All right, Stephen, thanks for the early preview of what 
what the situation is. Mike is here with more and we've had clouds kind of hanging around most of the week so far. Yeah, and yesterday there were a couple little bright spots late in the day. Um, this was from a couple of days ago. Uh, and this is pretty much <laughs> kind of an example of yeah, what we're going to be seeing the rest of the week. A lot of clouds out there and uh, you know, it's that time of year where it's the last of everything. So last bailing of the hay for 2021 down there in Seguin. A lot of hard work goes on. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, yeah, we got just basically cloudy skies right now, although this picture is a whole heck of a lot better than what it was yesterday. We do have a little bit of fog down to the southeast, but it's nowhere near what it was. And again, the reason for that basically is the fact that we've got a pretty good breeze out there this morning, and we're going to keep a well, breezy 10 to maybe 15, 20 mile per hour winds later on this afternoon. So upstairs in the atmosphere, here's the water vapor imagery, and this just shows the, uh, the moisture loft, and we've got this good flow coming in here off the Pacific Ocean. So that's what's helping out with clouds aloft. And then we've got all the uh, moisture coming in here down at the surface, and that's what's keeping the the humidity so high. Dew points remain in the mid and upper 60s and nothing is going to be changing over the next couple of days. We will continue to keep this very high humidity around all the way through Thursday through Friday. And so with the extra humidity, there is still going to be the chance for some, you know, scattered fog, maybe a little mist in the morning and then perhaps a little sprinkle or even a shower in the afternoon. Then things will be changing by Friday night, late, early Saturday morning. So pretty much cloud cover. You know, again, a couple of holes here and there are possible. I really wouldn't count on a lot. I'm just kind of going with cloudy skies throughout the next couple of days and pretty much all the way through the weekend as well. There's been a little bit of a change as far as the latter half of the weekend is concerned. Jumping ahead, different computer model same scenario basically for the next couple of days where we've got a lot of clouds around here and you saw how there were those maybe a stray shower here or there then we get into early saturday morning it looks like the front may slow down a little bit so we'll stay very mild in the overnight hours and then the rain moves on in here throughout the morning hours and pretty much sticks around most of the day. I think maybe the heaviest will be in the first portion of the day, perhaps a little break in the action, but then another bit of a, a disturbance moves across here overnight and in through a good chunk of the day on Sunday. So Sunday, maybe I think the heavier rain is going to be on Saturday, but Sunday looks like it may be just another one of those perhaps kind of stay on the couch inside. 74 degrees today at noon cloudy again a sprinkle is possible not very likely though and basically mostly cloudy skies today 78 for a high temperature and the next couple of days the records may be in jeopardy records are right around low 80s we're going to be 78 and 80 respectively thursday and friday within a degree or two of the records for each one of those days then that front moves on through here early on saturday and then just 50s windy on saturday temperatures drop down and the official start of winter is Tuesday morning. And one giant snowflake arrives on Tuesday. No. <laughs> is this trend going to hold out for Christmas, that cooler trend? Uh, right now, it looks like it will be coolish, okay, not okay. cold, though. So roughly normal temperatures. We're looking at, uh, as of right now, about mid, maybe upper 60s, so slightly above normal. but. Okay, not Father records. Christmas, I'm holding you to doesn't, that. Doesn't look like records for Christmas, but not any, uh, like, big heavy coat weather. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Santa Mike. <laughs> All right, 453, about 69 degrees. Well, still ahead, we hear from one of the stars of the latest Superman movie. Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Sorry. Spider-Man movie that hits theaters tomorrow night. And, you know, makes people mad. No, I know, I know. Superman, I mean, Spider-Man. <laughs> is swinging back into theaters. Plus, Cardi B is making history. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's <laughs> Jason Nathanson. The second to last episode of Marvel's Hawkeye drops today on Disney+. Plus. And Frothy is pinching himself that he gets to play in this world. On the show, the Irish actor is Kazi, a top lieutenant in the tracksuit mafia, telling us that as a huge Marvel fan, he had a blast making the series. But I was definitely nervous going into it. I was like, what? What has happened to my <laughs> my little mediocre life? This is insane. Hawkeye will wrap up its six-episode run next week. Elsewhere in the Marvel Universe, the latest Spider-Man movie hits theaters tomorrow night with Willem Dafoe reprising his role as the villain Green Goblin, which he last played in 2007's Spider-Man 3. And at the premiere this week in Los Angeles, he said the new film is... Very ambitious, uh, and it kind of marries some of the past with... The present and the future, I mean, it's all in the mix. 
Spider-Man No Way Home could break pandemic-era box office records when it opens this weekend. Cardi B making history with the song I Like It, It Just Went Diamond, sales of 10 million, making her the first woman rapper with three diamond singles. And happy birthday to rock star and licorice pizza star Alana Haim, turning 30 today. While Downton Abbey Emmy nominee Michelle Dockery is 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's 457 and 69 degrees. Later on GMSA, a preview of President Biden's trip to Kentucky today to survey damage from those deadly tornadoes. Plus, Snap is launching a standalone video editor for iPhone users. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. And Stephen already gave you one live update. We'll have more to come right here throughout the morning show as there are several incidents working right now. We have a crew on the way to one of them. We'll be back and check in with Stephen and Mike as we continue GMSA on your Wednesday morning. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news the morning, a woman's body found on the west side overnight. We have details on the investigation so far. It's day five of the recovery process here in Mayfield. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Kentucky. Coming up, why one man traveled hundreds of miles just to give out free food. 69 degrees at 5 o'clock this morning. Those warmer temps sticking around, but do we still have rain in our future and later in the week? Mike will let us know in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, December 15th. Steph has taken a day off, so Sarah Coast is nice enough to step in this morning. I'm happy to be here. 10 days till Christmas. I'm excited. Uh, I, I don't I don't know. I, I have a whole week off next week. Yeah, so and where are you at shopping wise? Oh, I'm done. You're done? Good. So right. I yeah, I finished about five days ago. I where are you at on wrapping? I'm done. Okay, fantastic. You know what I did? I put all of my wrapping in Central Market brown bags because uh -huh. they are festive bags for the holiday. And, That's cool. And you know, they're recyclable, sustainable. Uh, Mike, you'll love this. I cheated and got those Mylar bags, uh, uh, Christmas bags, and you just put a little bow around them and then done. It's like I'm roping Look, he's, a Look, he's cringing at it's us like right I'm, now. I'm roping a calf. <laughs> I put it in there and I... <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Wrapping himself. It's, it's funny because that was our uh, question yesterday on SA Live. Bags, gift bags, or wrap? At this point, who cares? Yeah. Right? But most people said definitely rap. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, is that most people or you, Mike? No, I, I didn't. Uh, no, no, this was just strictly viewers. <laughs> I it, suspect so. you're a pretty good gift wrapper, Mike. I try. Yeah. So, no, yeah. Not it's, to it's the odd shaped things that are tough to wrap. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about anything just not to talk about the weather this morning because it's still <laughs> very warm. Just to put it in perspective, we're at 70 right now. The normal average low temperature is 42 degrees. So we are obviously way, way above that. One thing that's helping this morning, we do have a pretty good breeze out of the south at about 14 miles per hour. So that is really helping to prevent a whole lot of fog from forming up. We're going to be in the upper 70s later on today. Not much of a uh, increase in temperatures, just given the fact we've got such a very, very warm slash hot start. The aquifer did not change in yesterday's reading and allergens, mold and mountain cedar are both on the low side. It's going to be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar does by Saturday because we got that big strong front moving on through here. All right, fog, there is a little bit down along the coastal plain, but of course nothing like what we had yesterday. And again, like I said, because of the uh, pretty good breeze that we have out there out of the south at about 10, 15 miles per hour. And it's going to stay kind of sort of breezy throughout the day. So warm, uh, a hint of fog down to the southeast, and then maybe a little bit of that mist. Just kind of a, be on the lookout for it, but not very likely this morning. And then warm, humid, cloudy. Still can't completely rule out a sprinkle today, but, you know, the odds are not that great. And then the next couple of days, maybe a little sprinkly shower here or there, and it's going to be pretty much more of the same. Near record temperatures tomorrow and Friday within a couple of degrees of the respective temperatures both of those days. And then we get the weekend, and that's going to bring about some big changes. Big, strong cold front moves through early on Saturday morning. So still, it, the whole scenario is about the same, although it looks like the rain may linger even into a good portion of the day on Sunday. But it's going to be one of those... Uh, Kind of the whole weekend. If you haven't wrapped all your gifts, this is going to be the perfect weekend for it. Just sit inside and do that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, uh, you still got those big problems, right, sir? Yeah, that's right, Mike. I was just, uh, we're still trying to confirm the details here off this incident. What we're looking at is I 10 East at Loop 410. That's the view from Transguide. Now, I was just talking to our Katrina Weber. What she has told me is that police have informed her that this incident, unfortunately, is a deadly one, possibly involving a pedestrian. Again, we are working to get more details 
details from Katrina, but uh, she's there on the scene trying to find a safe spot to get that information. But what she's telling us is that this is along the, the axis road of I 10 East near Foster Road, so it's not we're not seeing any of the main lanes impacted as of right now. But of course, we're working to get those details and Katrina will be out there a little bit later, hopefully providing that information. Uh, let's go ahead and take you to the map because we do want to show you what it's looking like right now from where that trans guide camera is off I 10 East at 410. It's about a mile from where we're seeing that incident again near Foster Road in those eastbound lanes. Uh, you can see our map is now picking that up and we're seeing a little bit of a restricted flow there. Thankfully, it is still very early on in the morning to where we're not seeing traffic being impacted as of yet. But again, we will be working to get those inform that information for you as the morning does go on. Let's take a jump over here because we still have a pesky stall that's been lingering there for a little while off US 90 eastbound a military drive, not causing any issues. But again, something to always be on the lookout for, especially if you're an early morning driver. As we take a wider look at the map, it does look like a crash may have popped up off of 410. We'll find out what's going on there in just a moment. But the silver lining here is that if you are traveling into San Antonio, it is pretty much green across the board. You're not going to see any delays if you're traveling in perhaps from Bernie on I-10, 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area, 26 minutes from 281 and Bolverde, and we're looking at the same time coming in from 35 and New Braunfels. But again, the big issue this morning is going to be right here along I-10 East at Loop 410. Again, Katrina Weber will be out there a little bit later on, so hopefully we will get that information to you shortly. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, Castle Hills Police say one of their officers was involved in a crash overnight. Happened around 1230 this morning at the intersection of Loop 410 and Blanco. Police say a woman driving the other vehicle crashed right into the back of the officer's squad car, stopped at a red light. The woman was detained for suspicion of DWI. No one was hurt in the incident. Also new this morning, San Antonio police are looking into the death of a woman whose body was found overnight. It happened just before 11 p.m. in the 2500 block of Culebra on the city's west side. SAPD says a homeless man found the woman's body in a drainage ditch under Culebra Road. EMS says the woman is in her 30s or 40s and that it looks like she'd been there for a while. Homicide detectives are now investigating. 506 right now, day five of the cleanup and recovery over in Mayfield, Kentucky. The number of people unaccounted for after the swath of deadly twisters ripped through the area is now over 120 people. But as the dust settles, acts of good faith between strangers. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Mayfield, Kentucky with more. Overnight in Mayfield, Kentucky, the recovery and healing. Praise the Lord. The community reeling after a swath of tornadoes left this town of 10,000 devastated. I still expect that we will find at least some more bodies. There is just uh, so much destruction. Governor Andy Bashir says 122 Kentuckians are still unaccounted for. 74 people have lost their lives in Kentucky with 88 dead across five states. Residents without power up to 24,000. President Biden will visit some of the hardest hit areas of the state today. Be uh, serving storm damage firsthand, making sure that we're doing everything to deliver assistance as quickly as possible. But ever since the storms, hundreds of kind souls came into town with the simple mission to help. Ask any of the countless volunteers here and they'll tell you their town is unrecognizable. But for one man, it's a scene all too familiar. Cooking and serving. That's Jeff Carney. After seeing the destruction the tornado left behind, he, a few friends, and his food truck traveled hundreds of miles to Mayfield just to serve out free meals. I sent a couple of pictures of my wife and she said it breaks her heart because that's what it reminds her of. Exactly what we all went through. Okay. Oh, man. What they went through was one of the deadliest tornadoes in American history. Carney is from Joplin, Missouri, and back in 2011, the EF5 tornado that altogether claimed the lives of 161 people there really took his own. It was crazy. And for you know months, things weren't normal. Now, more than a decade later, he took to social media to tell his community about his own chance to give back. And residents gave him money, food, and clothes to take with him. I just kind of felt like this is Joplin's time to pay that back. Carney says he and his food truck will be here for at least a week, feeding anyone who needs a meal. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. Well, in the wake of those deadly tornadoes, KSAT community is hosting a phone bank today. We want to raise money for the recovery efforts, and every dollar goes to the Red Cross on scene. Again, the phone bank is happening later today from noon to 7 p.m. We will announce that phone number then. In your other morning headlines, today former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is expected to plead guilty to violating George Floyd's civil rights. A change of plea hearing scheduled for this morning, U.S. District Court in St. Paul. 
Chauvin charged with two counts of depriving Floyd of his rights during a May 2020 arrest that resulted in Floyd's death. Chauvin's already been convicted in state court of murder and manslaughter charges for pinning his knee against Floyd's neck. Amtrak is relax relaxing its vaccination policy. The company CEO says the company would reinstate regular testing as an alternative to vaccination. Amtrak had tightened its rules in line with the Biden administration's stricter policy for government contractors, but a federal judge has put that executive order on hold temporarily. Amtrak's president previously said it would not have enough employees once the mandate took effect on January 4th. Just about 10 minutes past the hour, 69 degrees. Still ahead, details on a lawsuit against satellite radio provider Sirius XM. And up next, we get an up-close look at how the U.S. Postal Service here at home is using a new facility and high-tech equipment to help deliver Christmas items on time. 69 degrees at 510 this morning, uh, another warmer morning for our time of year. Mike says things may cool down later in the week. He'll let us know when we come back. 513, a new facility and high-tech equipment is helping USPS deliver Christmas packages on time. KSAC got a tour of the package support annex facility located on I-10 East of Converse. On top of opening this space, USPS also invested in additional pieces of equipment Three here in San Antonio, including the flexible rover system, 12 robotic carts that optimizes employee effort, and the linear integrated spider, a large parcel sorting conveyor system. Our uh, single induction parcel sorter is capable of doing 3,000 pieces an hour and has 200 separations that we sort into for our delivery area. If you're hoping to send gifts to loved ones, express mail needs to be sent by the 16th, which is tomorrow and USPS retail ground mail needs to be sent today in order to get there by Christmas. Thank you for that reminder. Mm -hmm. I have to do that's the one thing I have to do. Almost all the shipping companies say today is the day after today. You're going to pay a whole lot more. Ooh. Okay, that's my plans for this afternoon. Good luck. Good luck to you, Sarah. Right now, 514, 69 degrees. Still ahead, why Twitter is rolling out new automatic captions for its videos. Is that a good thing? I think that cat is talking to us. <laughs> Meet Jeff. In his life, he's been to the bottom of the ocean, the tops of mountains, the ER, twice, and all the places this guy runs off to. <laughs> like Jeff's, a life well lived should continue at home. Home Instead offers customized services from personal care to memory care, so older adults can stay home, stay safe, and stay happy. Home Instead, to us, it's personal. <coughs> Cold season is back. Bounce back fast with Alka Seltzer Plus. With 25% more concentrated power. Alka Seltzer Plus. Oh, what a relief it is. So fast. Also try for cough, mucus, and congestion. It's Macy's Gifts You'll Love to Gift Sale now with an extra 20% off the gifts they're dreaming of. Plus, everyone gets $10 Macy's money for every $50 spent. Today's Tech Bytes, Sirius XM is being sued for failing to provide podcast transcripts to deaf users. The lawsuit filed by the National Association of the Deaf says the company and its subsidiaries, including Pandora, are violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. Sirius XM has not responded to requests for comment. Twitter has rolled out automatic captions for videos, and it's available in over 30 languages, but Twitter won't let you edit captions to correct errors, and there's no way to report a bad caption. Finally. Snapchat is offering a new video editor. Snap says Story Studio lets you make advanced, engaging videos to share on the platform. The app is free, but only for iPhone users. It's seen as another way for Snapchat to compete with TikTok and Instagram. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. All right, Stephen Cavazos is in. We have some serious issues we need to get to on the road, Stephen. That's right, Sarah. We are taking a look here at I-10 East at Loop 410. We've been talking about this for a little while now. Uh, this is a view from TransGuide. Let's take a closer look and see exactly what's going on at this hour. I still have some first responders that have been out there for a good while now, and I've been talking to our Katrina Weber. She's been trying to find a safe location at this time, but what we can tell you is that this incident, unfortunately, is a deadly one, it possibly involving a pedestrian. Again, information is still limited at this hour, but hopefully we'll be hearing from Katrina in a few moments and find out exactly 
exactly uh, the details behind this situation, but let's take you to the map and see if that's impacting traffic just yet. And thankfully, we're not seeing a buildup, but as you can see, I-10 eastbound from where that shot of Kent trans guide is, it's about a mile from where that situation is being reported. Again, I-10 eastbound at Foster Road, so watch out for that location. That does look like it's on the access roads. Jump over here. This stall's been there for quite a while now. I'm starting to think it may just be an abandoned vehicle off US-90 eastbound at Military Drive, so be on the lookout for that. And a jump up here to 35, 1604, I should say, eastbound at Lookout Road. There's been some construction that's been going on there for a little while that led to a little bit of a slowdown there, and the highway closed off, but thankfully it looks like they have wrapped up, and so some good news there, but uh, again, something to keep in mind if you travel through that route early in the morning. Uh, still have the situation off of 410, but that doesn't look like it's impacting traffic just yet. This is going to be the situation of the morning. Again, hopefully we'll be hearing from Katrina in a few moments. Find out exactly what's going on there this morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. And uh, Mike, best guess, are these flowers or colorful fall leaves can't tell I don't know it looks like flowers okay it so. looks like flowers beautiful yeah this is from a couple of days ago a uh, not only is it a beautiful picture but this wins the alliteration uh, for the morning because the sunny Sunday sunset along Somerset South Side San Antonio say that three times fast mm -hmm. <laughs> amen to that one but beautiful <laughs> picture thank you very much for the uh, KSAC connect shot there and we got a lot of clouds this morning still we're going to be seeing mostly cloudy skies or just basically cloudy skies all day long and for the next couple of days really we're not going to see much sunshine again I don't think until probably uh, Monday of next week 70 in town mid 60s in the hill country everybody is well above normal by a good 25 close to 30 degrees and even the the dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. They have been going up and up and up. And even compared to yesterday when it was really humid out there, the numbers are higher this morning than what it was yesterday. One of the reasons why we don't have any fog or as much as yesterday, there are a couple of patches down along the coastal plain is we've got a fairly decent breeze right now. So that's helping to prevent some of the fog from forming up. And that's going to be the case throughout much of the day. Yesterday we hit 75, so about 10 above normal and then add to that later on today, upper 70s and a lot of low 80s around the area. The Record is not in jeopardy today, but tomorrow and Friday we're going to be closer to it, probably within about uh, maybe a couple of degrees of the respective record high temperatures tomorrow as well as Friday. So it's going to be a, definitely a close call. Humidity is going to stay high all the way through Friday, and then that front comes on through here, and the humidity is going to be dropping off over the weekend, but we're still going to keep a lot of clouds around. We're still going to have uh, the cloudy skies and also the rain over the weekend. The reason for that is, is because we still have this flow coming in here out of the, uh, the southwest and a low is going to try and develop out there to the west of us. And so that will continue to, to keep us in this overrunning situation over the weekend. And then as that works its way on in here, best chance of rain right now is going to be first portion of the day on Saturday, but as the low sort of uh, works its way across the area into Sunday, that's going to keep rain chances around here. And then going into next week, looks like everything's going to sort of flatten out just a little bit as we head into uh, Christmas week. And so therefore, as of right now, temperatures are going to be pretty close to normals as far as high, which is mid 60s this time of year. That would be for next week. Today, anything but normal. 74 at noon, cloudy skies. Again, maybe a sprinkle or two. And then I'm just going to go with again, basically cloudy skies. If there are a couple of peaks of sunshine like yesterday, great, but uh, I wouldn't count on a whole bunch of it. And that's going to be the case in the next couple of days. 78 tomorrow, 80 on Friday. Like I said, both of those numbers are within a, a couple of degrees of their respective record high temperatures. The front comes through, knocks temperatures in the 50s over the weekend. And I think we're going to keep some rain sticking around on Sunday as well. Then we'll see more sunshine next week for the start of winter. There it is, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Have those rain chances gone down just a little bit? Over the weekend? Yeah. No. Saturday still the best chance of rain is going to okay. be. And pretty much first half of the day, I think we see a bit of a lull. And then the next sort of little wave of rain is going to come back in here on Sunday. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Right now, 523, 69 degrees. We're still ahead in your morning spotlight, Return of the Jedi gets added to the film registry, plus Garth Brooks adds Las Vegas dates. Time now for the latest headlines from the world of entertainment. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with our Hollywood Minute.
Return of the Jedi is among the 25 films added to the Library of Congress's National Film Registry this year. The annual list recognizes influential movies and preserves them for posterity. The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and A Nightmare on Elm Street also made the list, as did Selena, Wally, and Richard Pryor live in concert. Nora Jones is feeling festive. The nine-time Grammy winner's new music video, I Dream of Christmas, just premiered on Facebook and is the title track of her first ever holiday album. Jones is also set to sing in the PBS holiday special in performance at the White House, Spirit of the Season, airing next Tuesday. Garth Brooks says he's looking forward to celebrating his 60th birthday early and in style. The country crooner just announced two concerts in Las Vegas set for February 4th and 5th at Park MGM. Brooks hits the big 6-0 on February 7th. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Mr. Brooks puts on a heck of a show, every show. I've never been. He's amazing. Worth it? All right. Hardest, <laughs> hardest working country singer, no doubt about that. One of the hardest working. 528, about 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, one year after the first vaccinations against COVID-19, more than 800,000 people have died from the virus since the start of the pandemic. Why Delta? is still causing most of the problems. Plus, we'll tell you how much Hobby Lobby is raising its minimum wage for employees. Plus, why diet soda is slowly disappearing from store shelves. Making headlines this morning as the coronavirus death toll hits 800,000 in the U.S. Health officials are focused on both the Delta and Omicron variants. 69 degrees, waking up to a warm morning as Mike says, but he says things will also cool down later in the week. We'll explain in just a bit. Just feels weird to be talking about shorts and flip flops in mid-December. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday the 15th. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like Christmas, but OK, Mike, you said earlier it's going to cool down later in this week and it might stick around in 10 days for Christmas. Yeah, uh, right now it's looking like Christmas week is going to be pretty much uh, high temperatures will be average for this time of year, which is about mid 60s. So we're not seeing it now. Granted, still 10 days off, so things can change, but uh, that's what it's looking like as of right now. And the big change is gonna be coming about still. The timing of that is going to be for the weekend. So it's gonna be warm and humid up until then. 70 right now, we are anywhere from 25 to 30 degrees above the normal low temperature. Still plenty of humidity out there. The reason why we don't have a bunch of fog is the fact that we've got a pretty good breeze. Wind about 10, 15 miles per hour, and it's gonna stay on the breezy side today. So there are hints of fog around the area, especially down here along the coastal plain and just kind of be on the lookout for it because if the wind does happen to slacken off a little bit where you are, that fog can form up kind of quickly. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side and throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 74 at noon. We're not going to see a huge rise in temperatures throughout the day, only about eight to 10 degrees or so, but that's just because we've got such a very warm start and we are going to end up about uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. I have the mention of a sprinkle in there. Just don't be surprised if there is one. Same thing the next couple of days, but much better rain chances coming in for the weekend. It looks like they may stick around throughout a good portion of the weekend as well. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso still got those big problems on the far east side, right? That's right, Mike. Let's take a look right now at Transguide. We've been showing the shot throughout the morning. I-10 East at Loop 410 is a view from Transguide, but let's take a look and find out exactly where the situation is happening. You can see some flashing lights out there. A few road flares. Uh, but of course, a heavy first responder presence is also seen out in the distance. Now, what we're learning from Katrina Weber, who's there on the scene, we're going to hear from her in a moment, is that this is a deadly incident, possibly involving a pedestrian. As you can see there from that trans guide shot that is there along the axis roads. But let's take you to the map and pinpoint exactly how far that is from that shot that we're looking at, because based off of what we've been showing you, that's about a mile from that trans guide camera there off I-10 eastbound on the axis road near Foster Road. And as I mentioned, Katrina Weber is live there now. And Katrina, what have you been able to learn? Yeah, I did confirm with police that this is a deadly crash. Someone who was hit by one or more vehicles. And this is affecting the access road as well as the off-ramp 
of I-10 near Foster Road. Police have this whole thing shut down. They got a call right around 4 o'clock this morning. You'll notice some big trucks in the middle of this scene. Those are street sweepers. It was those people who, dis who made this discovery. Again, right around 4 o'clock this morning, they were doing their job here on the access road. They came upon what I would describe as a badly mutilated body. Police believe the person was mutilated by one or more cars hitting and possibly running over him or her. Now, they were not even, even able to uh, tell me the gender of the person who was killed because that is the extent of the mutilation here. But uh, as a result of this, this area is shut down. We do have the medical examiner here right now and police investigators. They've been here at the scene uh, for quite some time. We're not sure how long this closure will last, but we're going to stay here and keep you posted for when it does reopen. Reporting live on the far east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thanks for the update. This morning, it's been one year since some of the first people were vaccinated against COVID-19. As CNN's Britt Conroy reports, the Delta variant still dominates, but health experts say it's likely not long until Omicron takes its place. My beloved Uncle John, <laughs> and he was a really great person. John Zeme. Everything is just, I have to get through this day. Don't worry about the next one. Gigi Morse. Two of the more than 800,000 people who've died from COVID-19 in the U.S. since the start of the pandemic. Lawmakers held a moment of silence on the steps of the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> President Joe Biden says more Americans must act and get vaccinated, claiming vaccinations have saved more than a million Americans. But nearly 40% of those eligible haven't been fully vaccinated. In the meantime, new COVID cases are up nearly 50% from a month ago. And hospitalizations are up more than 40%. The Delta variant is still dominant. Omicron only accounts for about 3% of cases sequenced in the U.S. right now. But health experts say it might not stay that way for long. Omicron is spreading at a rate we have not seen with any previous variant. We are watching a war right now between the Delta variant and the Omicron variant. It is going to be dominant in the United States, given its doubling time. It's too early to say if Omicron is less severe, but... Right now, many, many states are having major outbreaks. The healthcare systems are being overwhelmed. That's what we want to avoid. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Apple is reinstating mass mandates at all its U.S. stores over concerns about rising COVID cases. The company had been gradually relaxing mask requirements in some cities. Apple says masks were mandatory at about half of its stores prior to this week's policy change. Some U.S. states like California and New York are also temporarily reinstating mask mandates indoors. New York provides an exemption for businesses that require proof of vaccination. In Hong Kong, dozens of people were trapped on the rooftop of a Hong Kong skyscraper this morning after a major fire broke out. The fire started in the early afternoon local time. The 38-story building houses both offices and a mall. At least one person was injured in that fire and sent to a hospital. Firefighters used an extendable ladder to rescue several people who were trapped on the lower floors of the building. Other people said to be trapped in restaurants inside the mall. Live Nation and Score More are denying any legal responsibility for the tragedy at the Astroworld Music Festival over in Houston. According to court documents, multiple Live Nation and Score More entities have denied all the allegations filed against them. Rapper Travis Scott has also denied any legal liability. Ten people died after a crowd surged during Scott's performance. Other concert goers were hurt. More than 340 lawsuits have been filed. Most of the suits allege the defendants were negligent and stood to make large sums of money from the concert itself. 538, about 69 degrees. Still ahead, a major craft retailer is getting ready to raise their minimum wage at the beginning of the year. And next, doctors explain why some former COVID patients who lost their sense of smell are having a hard time getting it back. 69 degrees, 538 this morning. Yeah, it's that warm temp. They're sticking around, but Mike says not for much longer. Cool front coming in this weekend. He'll explain when we come back. 541 researchers are still learning more about the long-term effects of COVID-19. Some people lost their sense of smell after the infection, and researchers say for some, regaining that sense was an unpleasant experience. Ursula Perry explains. Many patients recovering from COVID say they're always fatigued, and they have chest pains and memory problems. 
And now more people are reporting problems with their sense of smell too. The virus that causes COVID-19 seems to have a predilection for infecting the cells that live near the smell nerves and subsequently causing secondary injury or maybe even death of the smell nerves. The doctor says those nerves start to heal and about one in four months after the COVID infection, many patients complain of a condition called parosmia, a strange distortion of smell. The changes to the sense of smell are typically quite uh, bothersome. Uh, they can be things like uh, gasoline, smoke, fire, rotten food, rotten flesh. The doctor says anywhere from 15 to 50 percent of all patients lost their sense of smell may experience parosmia as the nerves in their noses start to regenerate. He says the best treatment for it is a type of therapy for the nose called olfactory training, which has been described as essentially practicing smelling concentrated odors to essentially stimulate your smell nerves. For most people, it takes several months to get a normal sense of smell back. And since there's no surgery or medication you could take, retraining your nose is the only way to go. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 542, still about 69 degrees. Up next, our friends with the Animal Defense League are standing by with a pet that needs a new home. Well, if you were looking for a, I guess, a fellow couch potato, somebody yes. just to sort of <laughs> chill with you, Michelle's got exactly what you need. He definitely is the one that you're looking for, if that's what you are looking for. So this is Chuck. He is 12 years old. He is still young and sprightly at heart, okay. um, but he is, is very calm. He's super, super sweet. He's been with us for just a couple weeks now. Um, he was unfortunately surrendered by his owner when oh. it didn't quite work out, um, but he is honestly the 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 best pet that you can bring into your home and give him a nice second chance for him. Since you walked in the studio, he has not uttered a peep. Not yeah. just that they're just like, okay, okay I'll sit on the couch. Yes. Like we said. So, what y'all got going on? Um, well, you know, right now we have a ton of babies still in our foster. So our um, our, our kind of baby boom that we have never quite ended. Um, so right now we have baby, a lot of babies that are still looking um, to be placed in a foster home. And along with that, we are needing items to help support those foster homes. If you are fostering, we provide everything that you would possibly need. So we need puppy pads. Um, you know, we need milk formula. We have our full wish list on our website, adltexas.org. Um, but we are definitely needing those items to just help support those babies that are just waiting to be old enough to be ready for adoption. It's the season for giving if you'd like to give a little bit. And that's the makes it so easy when you can just go to the website, a couple of clicks and goes right to you exactly what you need. Right? Exactly, exactly. We have an Amazon wish list. You can get it shipped directly to us. Okay. Well, if you like more information on that or if you just, again, want somebody to just kind of sit there on the couch with, <laughs> get this little guy. <laughs> 11 here in Anacadocious or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. In the morning consumer headlines, Hobby Lobby employees have an extra reason to look forward to the new year. The company says it'll raise full-time workers minimum wage to $18.15 an hour starting January 1st. That's an increase of $1.50 per hour. In a statement, the arts and crafts chain said it's tried to stay ahead of other retailers when it comes to raising the employee compensation. Okay, fans of diet, coke, or soda are noticing a trend on grocery store shelves. The word diet is disappearing for packaging for these soft drinks. It's being replaced with the words zero or zero sugar. Marketing experts say it's because the word diet has fallen out of fashion with millennials, stop looking at me, Mark, and Gen Zers. No calorie drinks first became popular in the 1960s and are still popular. According to market research company, the retail diet soft drink market in 2020 hit $11.2 billion. 548, we have a serious incident that is affecting traffic in one part of town. You know, thankfully, we're not seeing a buildup just yet, Mark. Uh, right now, we're taking a, shot, a look at the shot from I-10 East at Loop 410. Uh, this is along the Axis Road. You can see that we still do have those flashing lights out there. As Katrina Weber mentioned, uh, this is a deadly incident involving a pedestrian that was hit uh, possibly by a few vehicles. Of course, she's going to be out there working to get details. But as we saw a little bit earlier, this is definitely impacting traffic along the Axis Road. And in fact, it's not clear exactly when this will be wrapping up, but we're going to be watching this very closely, taking you right to the map. Now that has 
been updated to a crash on our map, but you can see based off where that trans guide camera is, it's about a mile from where we're seeing that situation happening along the access road again off I 10 eastbound near Foster Road. So watch out for that. If you're driving through there later this morning, we'll try to look for some alternative routes if you have to travel through there. But let's take a jump over here because stalls also seem to be popping up around the corner here. Loop 410 northbound at Marbach Road, a new stall popping up there, not causing any issues. The morning has been, I would say, riddled with a few problems that have been spread out. A lot of these have resolved very quickly, but as I mentioned, the big one is going to be right here along the far east side of town. This is off I-10 east at Loop 410. Again, just drive carefully through that area. We'll have more information as the morning does go on. Thank you, Stephen. What's another product that the name has changed? It's still the same thing. Hmm. Is it? You have something in mind? Used cars. Okay. They're now, now pre-owned. Pre -owned. That's true. Oh. You don't have a used car lot anymore. Changed over the years. You know, millennials, yeah. we're, we're just so difficult, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's saying a word, Sarah. Mike, good morning. <laughs> Another fantastic picture from Mr. McClellan of, over there at Woodlawn Lake. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for that picture. Appreciate that. And uh, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. We may see a little bit of a glow via the sunrise this morning, but it's not going to be, uh, you know, one of those big, beautiful sunrises. We're not going to be seeing that until probably about next week. And temperatures, we're at 70 right now, which is more like the low in summertime. 60s in parts of the hill country and we've got a bunch of humidity out there thanks to the flow coming in off the uh, the gulf of mexico and it's going to be sticking around with all this high humidity one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of fog this morning we do have a pretty good breeze out there but still uh there may be a little speck of mist here and there a couple of patches of fog especially down here along the coastal plain this morning nothing is really going to be changing that much throughout the day today tomorrow nor friday um the couple of sprinkly showers in the afternoon are going to be possible which is what these computer models indicate even later on this afternoon. Not anything really significant. Just uh, don't be surprised if there's a little sprinkle out there later on today. Same thing again tomorrow. Same thing on Friday. Then we go into the uh, the weekend and that's going to be a whole different situation. So out there to the west of us, we've got that huge trough, which is kind of digging down in there. That is going to be kind of working its way uh, sort of up to the north of us, but that's what's going to help to pull the front on through here. Out ahead of it, we've got the southwesterly flow upstairs in the atmosphere, and so that's what's helping to keep a lot of clouds around here. And then finally, that trough does pull the front on through. Now, it's going to be one of those shallow fronts, which means a shallow layer of cold air upstairs in the atmosphere. We are still going to have this flow coming in here out of the southwest, and bits of energy are going to be thrown out in ahead of that low. So that's what keeps the rain chances around here and also when you have this overrunning situation that's what keeps those just gray skies around cold air is kind of stuck down here at the surface that low won't be moving anytime too quickly so as that sort of um, opens up and moves across the area that's going to be looks like another kind of wave of rain coming in here later in the day on Sunday so it looks like the heaviest rain best chance of rain is going to be the first part of the day Saturday and then perhaps a bit of a lull in the action then more rain on Sunday then we'll finally it looks like clear out by Monday 74 degrees today at noon cloudy a couple of sprinkles out there and then a high temperature today up to 78 again a sprinkle or two is possible, not very likely. Tomorrow, more of the same, although the next couple of days we are going to be kind of within a few degrees of the respective records for tomorrow, as well as on Friday. Front moves on through here, and it's going to be just a good grilled cheese and soup. Hunker down in your jammies all I wonder if people are going to stay in their pajamas all weekend. I, I would. I, I mean, I, I work the weekend, but it's a <laughs> <laughs> other than that, yeah. <laughs> You're going to anchor in your jammies? Um, you know... Maybe if they we just hide part of them. Right. So you're keep off then the following week. So you know, just yeah, you won't be around the boss then. So if they can keep you behind the anchor desk, that's a that's a secrets. distinct possibility. Secrets, anchor secrets. Golly, can you believe a week from this Saturday is Christmas? I'm no. so excited. Yeah, it flew by like we were talking about months ago. 5:53 right now on your Wednesday morning. We're at about 69 degrees. Families, Christmas lights break a world record. Oh my gosh, look at that! And an Amazon delivery man comes to the rescue. That's coming up next. Move over, Griswolds. Your time in the Holiday Lights Spotlight is over.
A family in LaGrangeville, New York, has broken the Guinness World Record for the largest residential light display. The dazzling arrangement features 686,811 lights, not to mention spirals, snowmen, animals, and icicles, all choreographed to 250 different songs. It took Tim and Grace Gay and their three kids eight weekends and eight total miles of extension cables to prep the amazing display, which they used to raise funds for local firefighters and charities. In 2020 alone, the family raised more than $80,000. That's what Christmas is all about, right? It's about family and friends and how we can help each other. By the way, the previous record holders bested by the family were themselves. This year's display tops the gays' own 2014 Guinness World Record. After an Oregon woman's festive holiday decorations were left in disarray by a windstorm, it was an Amazon delivery driver to the rescue. Miriam Sierra's security camera captured the good-hearted and or possibly just anal retentive delivery driver, taking the time to personally reorganize the displaced display before completing his delivery. One by one, strategically placing it nicely back in their little spots, and, you know, making sure it was uh, standing up. It was just the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Sierra was so moved, she reached out to Amazon to see the driver's efforts recognized. Um, just really appreciated it. It was super, super nice. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA will have the latest on the cleanup in Kentucky after those twisters. The president of the United States visiting today. If you're flying out of San Antonio International this holiday season, you'll notice some interesting art. We'll tell you more about that. And we'll have the very latest on overnight shooting on the east side that sent one woman to the hospital. And uh, Stephen Cavazos and Katrina Weber are tracking a fatality accident right now uh, over on the east side. We'll get the very latest from them coming up right here on GMS. The Omicron variant continues to spread at an alarming rate here in the U.S. We'll have the latest. Waking up to another warm morning, 69 degrees at 6 o'clock this morning. Mike says we can expect some rain later in the week. He'll explain just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, December 15th. We know it's mid-December. You know it's December 15th, but apparently Mother Nature has no, no clue. She has no clue. It does, it does not feel like it, Mike. No, with temperatures right now that are anywhere from 25 to 30 degrees above normal, you know, the normal average low is mid is low 40s. We're 70. And then high temperatures are going to be uh, up in the upper 70s, close to 80. It's that weird, like, do I need the AC when you're going to sleep or not? Good idea for the next couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> but don't forget to switch it over if it doesn't do it automatically by the weekend, because it's going to be really cold, one of those bone chilling uh, kind of weekends. We've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Big difference, though, is we can see the lights out there. We do not have the fog like we had the past couple of days, especially yesterday, and that's because we've got a pretty good breeze out there. There are hints of it, though, right around Pleasanton, Rock Springs, uh, Beeville, and if the wind happens to slacken off somewhat, you will start to see a little bit of fog trying to form up. Victoria's got a lot of fog right now at just a quarter mile visibility and the allergens yesterday's count mold and mountain cedar are both on the low side it will be interesting to see what happens Saturday with those winds that are going to be shifting around Saturday as well as Sunday's um, allergen count with the mountain cedar we're going to have some pretty blustery winds around here on Saturday as far as temperatures today Pretty much what you have right now is what we're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the morning, thanks to the cloud cover and the humidity. And uh, we're going to be staying right around upper 60s, 70 degrees. We're not going to gain a whole lot throughout the day. Uh, maybe 10 degrees at most just because we have such a very warm start mid 70s today at noon and then a high temperature today up to 78 and the next couple of days we are going to be within range flirting with record high temperatures but again that will all be changing by the weekend we're going to talk about uh, rain chances over the weekend as well coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos and still got that big problem out there right yeah unfortunately Mike it has been a messy morning out on the roadways we are taking a look here at the view from I-10 East at Loop 410. Uh, this is a situation we've been talking about throughout the morning and right now it looks like we could be talking about that at least for the rest of this hour on GMSA. As we take a look, we have some flashing lights out there. Uh, this is a deadly situation involving a pedestrian. Katrina Weber has been out there throughout the morning and she'll work to give us some information here in just a moment, but I really want to talk about traffic right now because it does look like this is on the Axis Road and based off what TxDOT is saying that that portion on the Axis Road of I-10 East 
near Foster Road is closed at the moment as they first responders again are investigating this deadly situation. But taking a look, that's a mile away from where that trans guide camera is. And as I mentioned, Katrina Weber is live there this morning. Katrina, what are you able to see as regards to traffic? Well, the access road is still shut down. This is the eastbound access road of I-10 near Foster Road. The exit ramp also from 10 to Foster Road is closed at, at this time as police continue to investigate. I want to move out of the way just a little bit uh, so you can see that this is still going on. Uh, this call came in around 4 o'clock this morning. I believe we also have some video from TransGuide to show you. Uh, police got the call about an injured or sick person. Now, what happened is uh, we had some street sweepers who were out here doing their job when they came upon what can best be described as a body that had been mutilated. Police believe that person was hit by one or more vehicles at some point. They have no idea when this happened, but uh, they did find uh, the person here on the road. They were not even, even able to uh, identify the gender of that person. Uh, because of the mutilation, but that has been the situation since. We've had traffic investigators out here as well as the medical examiner and police are still taking measurements and also uh, clearing the area before they can open this up to traffic again. We're not sure exactly how long that will take. Police weren't able to give us an estimate, but we'll be here and let you know as soon as this is reopened. I-10 Access Road near Foster Road closed for now. Reporting live in far east on the far east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, Castle Hills police say one of their officers was involved in a crash overnight. Happened around 1230 this morning at 410 in Blanco. Police say the woman driving the other car crashed right into the back of the officer's squad car, stopped at a red light. The woman was detained on suspicion of DWI. No one was hurt in the crash. Canada is considering new limits on travel to the U.S. because of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Health officials warn the variant is spreading at a rate they have never seen before. 800,000 Americans have now died from COVID. And even though it's new, this new variant apparently is more mild than others, it could easily overwhelm our health care system. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, travel bans are now being considered along America's borders with Canada as concerns grow over the highly transmissible Omicron variant. Reports say the Canadian government will advise its citizens against non-essential travel outside the country. And in the U.S., federal health officials are now warning of a fast-moving new wave of coronavirus infections fueled by Omicron. Data reviewed by the CDC shows a massive wave of infections possibly peaking as soon as next month. It is going to be dominant in the United States, given its doubling time. The U.S. has seen a sevenfold increase in Omicron cases in the last week, now making up 3% of all cases and 13% of cases in New York and New Jersey. Early data suggests Omicron causes less severe illness than other variants, but doctors are concerned about what appears to be Omicron's ability to evade vaccines. Mills, one dribble. Yes! The number of vaccinated professional athletes testing positive is seemingly growing by the hour. Last night, the Brooklyn Nets had only eight players for their game, and ESPN reports 75 NFL players have now tested positive in the last two days. The coach of the Los Angeles Rams says all nine of his players who tested positive are vaccinated. Every single person is vaccinated that we're talking about. You know, like th that's, that's the thing that's the most concerning about all this is everybody's done exactly what they could. Health officials insist booster shots are the best protection against the virus. Hoping to slow the spread of both Omicron and the dominant Delta variant, New York University is now requiring booster shots for all students and faculty. And grocery store chain Kroger will now require unvaccinated employees to pay a $50 health insurance surcharge each month. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. It's all hands on deck. Volunteers with the American Red Cross have started arriving in Kentucky to help with storm cleanup and recovery following the deadly tornado outbreak that destroyed parts of several states. They'll be making sure residents have food, shelter, supplies and support. Organizers say they expect to help through January. Here at home, we're also helping those impacted by those tornadoes. KSAT Community is hosting a phone bank later today. We want to raise money for the recovery efforts, and every dollar goes to the Red Cross on scene. Again, the phone bank happening later today. Starts at noon, runs through 7 o'clock tonight, and we will have information on the phone number coming up in our later newscasts. Sirius XM is being sued for failing to provide podcast transcripts to deaf users. The lawsuit filed by the National Association of the Deaf says the company and its other businesses, including Pandora, are violating the Americans with um, the 
violating the Americans with Disabilities Act, Sirius XM has not responded for request for comment. Today, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is expected to plead guilty in violating George Floyd's civil rights. A change of plea hearing is scheduled for this morning in U.S. District Court in St. Paul. Chauvin is charged with two counts of depriving Floyd his rights during a May 2020 arrest that resulted in Floyd's death. Chauvin's already been convicted in state court of murder and manslaughter charges for pinning his knee against Floyd's neck. Breaking news from Washington overnight, a major step in the investigation into the January 6th riot. Former President Trump's top White House aide is now being held in contempt. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details. This morning, a second person from former President Trump's inner circle now faces possible criminal prosecution after refusing to testify for a congressional committee investigating January's attack on the Capitol. The resolution is adopted. Overnight, the House voted to hold Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena. Meadows has turned over 9,000 documents, including emails and text messages from Republican lawmakers and even from Donald Trump Jr. But after turning over those documents to the committee, Meadows is now refusing to answer questions about them. If found guilty of criminal contempt, Meadows could face up to a year in prison. But the decision on whether to prosecute him is up to the Justice Department. The vote to hold Meadows in contempt fell mostly along party lines. The Democrat says, no, nope, not good enough, Mr. Meadows. You've got to come in and answer any and every question we ask you, or we're going to try to put you in prison. It's disgusting. Mark Meadows has demonstrated contempt for Congress and for the public. He should be prosecuted like anyone else who ignores the law, because no one is above the law. Former White House advisor Steve Bannon has also refused to testify. He's scheduled to stand trial next summer. As for the committee's investigation into the attack, an organizer of the rally that preceded the storming of the Capitol is cooperating. Dustin Stockton spent seven hours with the committee Tuesday. He says he regrets how the rally unfolded, and he blames former President Trump for the violence. The buck's got to stop at President Trump. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. It's 610 and 69 degrees. So ahead on GMSA, one of our emerging Spurs stars continues to spread holiday cheer in the community. We'll show you what he's been doing on his days off. Are you planning on shipping any of your Christmas gifts? Well, we'll tell you when you'll need to send it off to ensure it gets there in time. Let's just say today's kind of a big day. Yeah. Those lines are going to be busy at places like UPS Store, FedEx, things like that. Outside with live cam right now, pretty much a third version of our morning forecast. I mean, same old, same old low cloud deck. Very, very mild. Mike has more coming up. Twitter has rolled out automatic captions for videos. It's available in over 30 languages, but Twitter won't let you edit captions to correct errors, and there's no way to report a bad caption. So if I cat, still don't understand why the, what the cat's saying. Well, if though. the caption's wrong, you can't correct it, even if the cat's saying, you know, something <laughs> completely different. I don't know. What is the world coming to? Snapchat <laughs> offering a new video editor. Snap says Story Studio lets you make advanced, engaging videos to share on the platform. The app is free, but only for iPhone users. It's seen as another way for Snapchat to compete with TikTok and Instagram. A new facility along with high-tech equipment is helping USPS deliver Christmas packages on time. KSAC got a tour of the package support annex facility located on I-10 east of Converse. On top of opening this space, USPS also invested in additional pieces of equipment there here in San Antonio, including the flexible rover system, 12 robotic carts that optimizes employee effort, and the linear integrated spider, a large parcel sorting conveyor system. Our uh, single induction parcel sorter is capable of doing 3,000 pieces an hour and has 200 separations that we sort into for our delivery area. Now, if you're hoping to send gifts to loved ones in time for Christmas, listen up. Express mail needs to be sent by tomorrow and ground mail needs to be sent today. So make plans to head out to USPS if you don't want to pay all that extra money. And all the other shipping companies are saying today's kind of your last day, too, to get it there by Christmas, unless you're going to pay a lot, lot more. Let's check out traffic right now. Stephen's been busy this morning tracking one incident in particular. 
Yeah, we went. We want to take our eyes off of that for just a moment. Get a quick look around town. It has been a pretty busy morning out of the roadway, so let's see what our early morning commuters can expect right now. There's I 10 at Presa. Traffic is getting moving at this hour. We're seeing 35 at Evans. It's also picking up there, but in some other spots, we're seeing it slow down. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but for now, the roads have not been looking too bad from these shots, but again, these are just a few shots. Let's take you to that big incident right now off of I 10 eastbound at Foster Road. Now, this situation is along the Axis Road. As Katrina Weber has told us, this is a deadly incident involving a pedestrian. She's been live there throughout the morning. Now, we do have a trans guide shot from 410, uh, I-10 East at 410, that is. That's about a mile away from where that situation is being reported. So, right now, that portion of the Axis Road is closed off as first responders are working to clear things up, but it could be a little while, so we'll continue to talk about that throughout the morning. Let's take a jump up here because we did see a little bit of a stretch of traffic along 1604 Eastbound, a lot Lookout Road. Uh, that is due to some construction that's been going on for a little while now. It should have wrapped around five, but looks like they could be experiencing some delays. We'll find out what's causing that. Let's take a jump over here because we also have a stall detected still there off in 410 northbound at Marbach Road. Overall, it has been a pretty busy morning. We're hoping things can slow down, but when morning rushes here, that tends to not be the case, guys. At least we don't have the fog like we had yesterday. Very true. That's yeah, true. That's Forgot all about true. that part this morning, Mike. Because, uh, I mean, not only the fog yeah. and the damp roads yesterday, and it was just kind of bleh out there. So uh, we got a decent breeze this morning, and that's one of the reasons why, one of the main reasons why we're not seeing a whole bunch of fog out there. And temperature is 70 degrees. The average normal low is low 40s, almost 30 degrees above normal. And later on today, we're going to be up in the upper 70s. So we're not going to gain all that much, but uh, that's just given the fact that we've got such a very, very warm start. Beautiful view out there at the Botanical Gardens. Look at that off in the distance. And oh my goodness, that is so pretty. It looks like they might have been out there for a lightscape, which I believe is still going on all the way through. Christmas and into the first couple of days of the new year. Beautiful out there. If you want to uh, want to go check it out there, check it out out there at the Botanical Gardens. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, it uh, is that my imagination or is starting to kind of lighten up a little bit. Sun's really not going to be coming up for almost an hour though, so we don't have obviously, like I said, the cloud cover or excuse me, the the fog like we have. Still got the cloud cover. Still going to keep plenty of clouds around all the way through the rest of the week and all the way through the weekend. Humidity remains very high. It's going to stay up there today, tomorrow, as well as on Friday. Then the front comes through early on Saturday, and that's going to knock the humidity down. But despite the fact now this is a, not one of these, and this has been the case with the last couple of uh, cold fronts because they've been so such shallow fronts, just a shallow layer of cold air. It doesn't just sweep everything on out of here and clear us out. So we will keep a lot of clouds around it even after the front moves on through here. So here's the uh, computer model, long range model going through uh, Thursday, Friday. Notice how there were a couple little sprinkly showers here and there. And then here comes the rain. And this is going to be Saturday morning throughout most of the first portion of the day on Saturday. Right now, that looks like the scenario is going to be that we will have rain first part of the day Saturday. It will start to taper just a little bit during the day and maybe the overnight hours on Sunday. A couple of sprinkles around here early on Sunday. Then another wave wants to work its way through here later in the day on Sunday, and that should be getting on out of here then by uh, the latter portion of or by late Sunday night, I should say, and right before the morning commute on Monday. So here's what's going on. Upper level winds. We've got most everything staying well up to the north of us and everything is pretty much moving straight west to east with these little kind of fluctuations here and there. And one of the reasons why we won't clear out in behind this front and I keep pointing this out is these upper level wind lines are not coming straight down out of Canada. So it's just that that shallow layer of cold air. So we continue with the overrunning situation and it's that low that's going to be kind of sending the bits of energy in here on Saturday as well as on Sunday. So forecast today we are going to be well staying very warm and humid. Lots of clouds around here and a sprinkle or two is possible. Not very likely though. 74 at noon and we're going to top off at 70 later on today. Again, lots of clouds, uh, perhaps a peak or two of sunshine like we had yesterday. Same thing tomorrow and Friday. A couple of showers here or there possible. Tomorrow and Friday, though, we're also going to be close to record high temperatures within a couple of degrees each day, Thursday and Friday. Front comes on through here. Good chance of rain on Saturday and looks like we may have 
Have a damp day on Sunday as well. Low 50s both days. Finally, some sunshine by next week. Still fairly cool for the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be very bone chilling. Plus, it's that damp chill too with all the, uh, the moisture out there. So it's going to be just, bones. just, yeah, it sinks Hate right down that. the back of your neck. Yep. A uh, heating blanket necessary. Thank you, Mike. Yep. <laughs> well, we know how you're going to cope. Yes. She was shivering just thinking about it. Yes, she was. Yes, she wears a scarf right off of the set here. Absolutely. It's the strangest thing. 621, about 69 degrees. All right, still ahead on GMSA. The Omicron variant continues to make its presence known on the market. Plus, we'll tell you why car deals could be going away for a while. This Essay Salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro. Hi, I'm Jesse Williams from Walk-Ons. I'd like to wish a Merry Christmas to all our servicemen, women, and vets. Merry Christmas. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Oh, you guys. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. A three! So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixin is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixin. In your morning consumer headlines, another day for another down day for the markets as investors wait to see how far the Omicron variant of the coronavirus will spread and what the Fed may do. The Nasdaq falling just over 1% at the close, the S&P finishing down 0.7%, and the Dow hit the closing bell down 0.3%. Don't expect a great deal on a car anytime soon. Analysts tell the Wall Street Journal the tightness in inventory could last all the way into 2023, driving prices up further and cutting any possible discounts. 625 at 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a scary scene in Hong Kong for hundreds of people trapped on a skyscraper roof. We'll have the details. In San Antonio police are left with questions after a woman was found dead on the city's west side. We'll tell you what we know so far. And out of trans guide right now, the major incident, gruesome scene on the east side where a pedestrian has been struck by at least one vehicle. Katrina Weber has been providing updates all morning. We'll also see if there are any other incidents affecting your morning commute with our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos. Street sweepers make a gruesome discovery here on the access road of I-10 on the far east side. And it's had the road shut down all morning. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the update on that. Outside with live cam, more of the same low clouds, very mild, but uh, we're absent the fog this morning, which is a nice change. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, December 15th. Good morning. I'm so happy to be starting the day here with you guys on GMSA. Last night, I went to bed with my heating blanket on. Bad <laughs> idea. I woke up and I was like, it's so sweating, hot. Sweating, sweating. AC. Yeah, because temperatures are uh, low temperatures, about like what we'd see about mid-summer. Uh, we're yeah. 25, 30 degrees above normal right now. So yeah, it feels now like it. you will need your electric blanket by the weekend. I'll have it ready on standby. Yes, because it is definitely going to be changing. As uh, Mark mentioned, it is nice uh, that we're not seeing a bunch of fog out there this morning. Even though conditions are ripe for it as far as all the humidity, we do have a fairly good breeze this morning. So that's what's really preventing a lot of that fog. But look at the, I mean, 70 degrees and the dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere is still well up there into the 60s. Most everybody has seen a good, uh, good breeze where there's not a whole lot of wind, especially down to the southeast. There is some fog and even a little bit around Rock Springs. So just still be on the lookout for the rest of the morning because should the wind slacken off a little bit, not forecasting that, but if it does kind of ease up, you might see uh, some of that, that fog try and form up, especially in low-lying areas. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. And uh, yeah, warm. There could be uh, some mist out there as well if we've got low clouds hanging around, as well as, like I said, a patch of fog just
just to look out for. And then warm and humid today. Um, a sprinkle or two is possible and pretty much just going to stay socked in with clouds. Now the rest of the week tomorrow, Friday, more of the same. We're going to be actually flirting with record high temperatures the next couple of days. Then by the weekend, we have the front moving on through here. Very strong front will only be in the low 50s all weekend long and a really decent chance of rain, especially Saturday. But it looks like rain chances may even stick around into Sunday. So that's some good news as far as rain is concerned. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos and still got that big problem out there, right? It's not been a great morning, Mike. Unfortunately, as we start this new uh, day that drivers are going to be uh, want to be aware of a few things that are going out there, but this is going to be the big one this morning. Uh, shot at I-10 East at Loop 410. This is a camera view from Transguide. Now what we're looking at there off in the distance are some flashing lights. You can see one here along the Axis Road and some a little bit further up. Now this is because this is a situation involving a pedestrian, a deadly situation, as, as I should say. But let's take you to the map because we want to see how that's impacting traffic at this hour. What we're looking at if, from that view of Transguide, it's about a mile away from what we're, look, what we're seeing. Now, we know that the Axis Road at this time is going to be closed off in those eastbound lanes near Foster Road, but uh, Katrina Weber has been live there throughout the morning with a closer look at the scene. And how are things looking now? Well, the area is still closed now, but I have a feeling the next time we talk, this will be reopened. Let me give you a look at what's going on. Just uh, some cleanup going on here on the access road. It is still shut down for now, but all those units that were out here, including the street sweepers, they are gone already. We have some video to show you from earlier this morning. This goes back to about four o'clock. That's when police got a call from a street sweeper crew who made the discovery. They discovered what can best be described as a mutilated body here on the access road, uh, a body that had been hit and run over possibly by one or more cars. Police are not sure. They don't know when this person was hit or by whom. They just found uh, what I said was a mutilated body. Uh, they were not able to tell me the gender of the person who was hit because of the damage that was done. But this road had been closed for the investigation. The medical examiner was out here. Uh, they were, police were talking to the street sweeper crews and also taking measurements. Uh, this, but as I said, this is still closed for now. This is just the access road near Foster Road, access road of eastbound I-10, still shut down for now. It's not affecting too much the main lanes of the highway, except for this exit here at Foster Road. But again, it does look very much like this will be reopened soon. Reporting live on the far east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A woman fighting for her life after a shooting on the east side. This unfolded around 2.15 this morning at the Cottage Creek Apartments on Raybon Drive, not far from Ritterman Road. Officers say an argument happened inside the complex before the shooting. The woman in her 30s was taken to the hospital in critical condition with a gunshot wound to the chest. Investigators are still looking for a male suspect. Also new this morning, at least one man fighting for his life after a shooting on the west side. This one happened around 930 last night near a convenience store on Cincinnati, just west of I-10. Police say surveillance video from the store shows two men walking when all of a sudden they start exchanging gunfire. Both men sped off from the scene, one in a sedan, the other in an SUV. The man in the sedan later showed up at a hospital in critical condition. Still no word on the other man involved in this shooting. Lots of questions after a woman was found dead on the city's west side. The discovery was made just before 11 last night on Culebra Road, not far from North General McMullen. Officers say a homeless man found the woman's body in a drainage ditch. According to first responders, the woman was in her 30s or 40s, and they believe she had been there for a while. Homicide detectives are investigating. To the coronavirus, more than 800,000 people in the U.S. have now died from COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic. President Joe Biden says more Americans must get vaccinated, saying vaccinations have saved more than a million lives. Nearly 40 percent of those eligible haven't been fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, new COVID-19 cases are up nearly 50 percent from a month ago and hospitalizations are more are up more than 40 percent. The Delta variant is still dominant. Omicron only accounts for about 3% of cases sequenced in the U.S. right now, but health experts say that may not stay that way for long. We are watching a war right now between the Delta variant and the Omicron variant as to who's going to become the king of the viral hill. And I think uh, right now the Omicron's transmission potential means that it probably will win. At this point, health experts say it's still too early to say if Omicron is less severe. 
Apple is reinstating mask mandates at all of its U.S. stores over concerns about rising COVID-19 cases. The company had been gradually relaxing max, mac, mask requirements in some cities. Apple says masks were mandatory at about half of its stores prior to this week's policy change. Some U.S. states like California and New York are also temporarily reinstating mask mandates indoors. New York provides an exemption for businesses that require proof of vaccination. In Washington, Congress averted a catastrophic debt default early this morning after Democratic majorities in both chambers voted to send a two and a half trillion dollar increase in the nation's borrowing authority to President Biden. The vote followed a similar move in the Senate yesterday. The action came just shy of a deadline set by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who warned last month she was running out of maneuvering room to avoid the nation's first ever default. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said the new debt limit will be extended into 2023. That means the issue will not have to be addressed again until after next year's midterm elections. In Hong Kong, dozens of people were trapped on the rooftop of a Hong Kong skyscraper this morning after a major fire broke out. The fire started in the early afternoon local time. The 38 story building houses both offices and a mall. At least one person was injured in the fire and sent to a hospital. Firefighters use an extendable ladder to rescue several people who are trapped on the lower floors of the building. Other people were said to be trapped in restaurants inside the mall. It's day five of the cleanup and recovery in Mayfield, Kentucky. The number of people unaccounted for after the swath of deadly tornadoes ripped through the area is now over 120. But as the dust settles, we're still seeing acts of good faith between strangers. ABC's Ika Jachi is in Mayfield, Kentucky with the story. Good morning. It's been a tough time for people here trying to move forward. Thankfully, there's one man who's been through a similar tragedy that's doing whatever he can to make things a little bit easier. Overnight in Mayfield, Kentucky, the recovery and healing. Praise the Lord. The community reeling after a swath of tornadoes left this town of 10,000 devastated. There is just uh, so much destruction. Governor Andy Bashir says 122 Kentuckians are still unaccounted for. 74 people have lost their lives in Kentucky with 88 dead across five states. Residents without power up to 24,000. President Biden will visit some of the hardest hit areas of the state today. Be uh, serving storm damage firsthand, making sure that we're doing everything to deliver assistance as quickly as possible. But ever since the storms, hundreds of kind souls came into town with the simple mission to help. Cooking and serving. That's Jeff Carney. After seeing the destruction the tornado left behind, he, a few friends, and his food truck traveled hundreds of miles to Mayfield just to serve out free meals. All these guys volunteered to come up here. Uh, I called them and they were like, hey, I'm down, let's go. Carney says he and his food truck will be here for at least a week feeding anyone who needs a meal. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. In the wake of the deadly tornadoes that destroyed parts of several states, KSAC community is hosting a phone bank today. We want to raise money for the recovery efforts, and every dollar goes to the Red Cross on scene again. The phone bank is happening later today from noon to 7 p.m. We will announce the phone number then. San Antonio Spurs got another day off yesterday before finishing up their five game homestand tonight. But not Kelton Johnson after giving $1,000 each to five families for a Christmas shopping spree at Academy on Monday. The Spurs forward was added again yesterday, this time suiting up as Santa and surprising 15 families on the west side, spreading Christmas cheer with gifts and, of course, some Spurs tickets. A blessing to be here, you know, a blessing to be able to to help some families out and, you know, see their reactions. Uh, we just had a kid and like uh, when when he seen the gifts and seen everything that came with it, he's his jaw kind of dropped like he was shot. And, you know, that kind of really like things like little things like that really make my day. And, you know, glad to see other people happy. Silver and Black are back in action tonight. They host the 15 and 14 Charlotte Hornets. Currently, the Spurs are at 10 and 16 on the season. Hopefully they can keep some momentum going after their win the other night against the New Orleans Pelicans. Tip off against the Hornets tonight at 730. It's 640 at 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, look at San Antonio International's new artwork. Holiday travel sometimes can seem like a chore, but if you're flying out of San Antonio's airport, there is a quick pick me up in the form of some interesting art. Yeah, colorful murals brighten up the walls inside one of the parking garage has it out there at San Antonio International Airport. In this week's edition of If These Walls Could Talk, Katrina Weber shows us why they seem to be for locals only. Long 
online that security checks can be drawbacks in getting away. To get into the right headspace for that hustle and bustle, passengers at San Antonio International actually may enjoy staring at some of the walls. We have uh, six different artists that created five different concepts that were all highly unique. With the help of San Antonio Street Art Initiative, the airport took its long-term parking structure to a whole new level back in 2019. They actually put murals on every level at both elevator bays. The artwork was part of a marketing plan aimed at local travelers. Uh, we were coming out of summer travel and looking towards holiday travel of that year and wanting to remind people that we have a very convenient and easily accessible long-term parking garage. Matt Evans says putting the art on the walls wasn't exactly easy. There were lots of logistics involved, such as painting only at night when traffic died down and preparing the painting surface. All told though, it took only about two weeks. The truth is, the painting portion of this, I think happened in two or three nights. Each one of these pieces includes a salute to San Antonio in some form or fashion. Check out her hair, it's shaped like the Alamo. From tiny details to a giant concha, they're all symbols that locals love in a place used by us. Folks can remember after a week away on vacation, hey, I think we parked, was it level two or level three? I can't remember, but we definitely had a big concha on the way out. They're murals that are designed to be memorable in more ways than one. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks so much, Katrina. Let's take a look at Trans Guide right now. We are taking our eyes off of that situation off of I-10 East for a moment to talk about what we're seeing here along 35 at 1604 uh, construction that we've been talking about throughout the morning as well. As you can see, we have a stretch of lights out there. So drivers, pack that patients are finding an alternative route. This is due to some construction that's been going on for a little while now. Let's take you right to the map and see what uh, it's looking like there in those eastbound lanes of 1604. Now this is around Lookout Road. So this is construction should have wrapped a little bit earlier, but Looks like drivers are now facing a delay, and now that morning rush is here, it's not looking good. Uh, the big situation, though, that we have been tracking is this incident off I-10 eastbound at Foster Road involving a pedestrian that was hit by a vehicle or possibly more vehicles a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, Katrina Weber has told us that the access road looks like it's opening up, but from where that trans guide shot was that we showed you earlier, it's about a mile away from where that situation is happening along the access road. So hopefully we'll see some resolution, but it does look like some first responders still may be out there. Of course, we'll have more details on that throughout the morning, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And what a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. If you uh, have a chance, yeah, check it out there at the Pearl. That Christmas tree is absolutely beautiful. And I, I think the, the architecture of the building there in the background kind of complements that as well. And then also the trees right there along the, uh, the river right there by the Pearl are always decorated. Really pretty there, too. All right, lots of clouds hanging around here this morning. We don't have any fog to deal with, though. So that's some really good news because we've got a fairly decent breeze. Now, there is some fog, though, down along the coastal plain right now. Victoria Victoria has been reporting a quarter mile visibility and just and there's a, a hint of it out toward Rock Springs. So just be on the lookout because it, if the wind kind of slackens up a little bit, you might see some of that fog trying to form up. Humidity remains very, very high and it's going to stay high all the way through Friday. Then we get the front moving through here on Saturday and that's going to knock the humidity on out of here. But again, keep emphasizing that it's not going to be clearing things out when this front moves on through because it is a very shallow layer of cold air that's coming on in and then we still are going to have a lot of moisture sliding in on top of it. So uh, lots of clouds the next couple of days. A sprinkle or two is going to be possible in the afternoon. Then the rain comes in here and this is going to be overnight Friday into Saturday as the front moves on through. It looks like the timing of the front right now is going to be perhaps about five, six o'clock in the morning. So we'll start off very mild. It'll go down in the books that we're going to have a high temperature on Saturday of upper 60s, close to 70. But again, that's going to be in the wee hours of the morning afternoon maybe 50 or perhaps even upper 40s, especially in the hill country. And we're going to have some decent rain, a couple of showers, even a few thunderstorms. And then the rain should start to kind of move off to the east a little bit late in the day Saturday. Then we get another bit of energy coming in here from the southwest, and that's going to give us looks like another round of rain on Sunday, and that's going to be into the evening hours. Then that should be getting on out of here. Then by the first part of the week next week, we'll actually see a little bit of sunshine as we head on into the, uh, the first part of next week. So the forecast today and by the way, temperatures right now next week look like they're going to be staying just about normal. Unlike this 74 degrees at noon, 
So we're already 10 above normal at noon and then add to it and we're going to be in the upper 70s later on today. Plenty of clouds, maybe a stray sprinkle or two, just a, a mention of it. And tomorrow, Friday, same thing. Low temperatures stay about 70. High is going to be in the upper 70s, close to 80. Both of those days are going to be really close to their respective record high temperatures. Front comes through then. In the overnight hours, early morning Saturday, good rain chances to start off the day Saturday, and temperatures will be dropping down windy on Saturday as well. Then Sunday, we have some more rain chances, so it looks like a good, I mean, just stay inside and watch Christmas movies. Watch those and, Hallmark Christmas movies. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Oh, Mike. <laughs> you imagine if Mike had his own film festival, be nothing but Hallmark Christmas movies? Well, this weekend, Max mm -hmm. and I were joking with him, saying, you know, like, you should probably star in I would like to. <laughs> making a pitch out there. He's ready. <laughs> I think we've pitched this before. And so know. far, no takers. But if you're an agent right now, <laughs> no casting well agents for Hallmark movies, you know, watch so. But you're going to work in a Hallmark store before you're in a Hallmark movie. <laughs> Right now, 650, about 69 degrees. Okay, the disappearance and death of Gabby Petito made national headlines and has forced our attention on dating violence. Tomorrow on GMSA, how cell phones may it save you or a loved one from a dangerous situation. And as we approach the top of the hour, wrap things up after this. And life's look outside right now as we wait for the sun to come up on your Wednesday morning. Traffic is flowing here again on the far east side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live at what happened the scene of a deadly crash along I-10 here near Foster Road. This access road, which had been shut down all morning, now back open. Let me give you a look at the video from earlier this morning. Around four o'clock this morning, San Antonio police got a call from a road crew, uh, street sweepers, who came upon what can best be described as a mutilated body. Police believe that person had been hit and run over by at least one vehicle, possibly many more. They had the area shut down while they conducted their investigation. They were not able to tell me anything about the person, including the gender, because of the damage that was done. But they did their investigation. They wrapped things up about 15 minutes ago and reopened this road. And that is the situation here. Reporting live on the Far East Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks for the update, Katrina. Now, as we take a look at that particular shot at Transguide, we are seeing traffic moving through that area pretty smoothly. But let's take it right to the shot here, and you can see that, uh, again, we don't have those first responders present anymore, so some good news. But, of course, we'll give you more updates as they become available. Uh, that incident took place around I-10 eastbound at Foster Road, but we're starting to see more of a buildup here along Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road, where we have some construction that's been going on for a while. Those eastbound lanes are not looking good, and as we take a wider look at the map, it is getting a lot busier and of course that is expected with morning rush you can see we have a lot of uh, traffic buildup but let's check in with Mike with what we can expect weather wise well nice thing is we're not seeing a whole lot of fog there is some uh, being reported around Victoria visibility is pretty low there but we've got a decent breeze out there this morning so that's helping with the the fog situation or preventing a lot of fog and temperatures though are really really warm you sure don't need a jacket uh, we're gonna be in the upper 70s later on today maybe a sprinkle I think just pretty much cloudy skies all day if there's a peak of sunshine. Consider yourself fortunate with that. And then tomorrow we're going to be pushing at records both tomorrow as well as Friday within a couple of degrees of the respective record high temperatures. Front's going to move through here and good chance rain over the weekend. Cold temperatures. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. GMA starts now.